Apologies for the fact that we missed a show on Friday. We got hit with some rather gusty winds in Maine that day, and a big tree fell right across the street from where I live, knocking out our power and internet at the wrong time for me to get a show out. So I ended up taking the day off and catching up on errands. It was a perfect grown-up day off. This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, as well as our flagship title, Marijuana Today, and the Green Rush and Weed Wonks shows. Visit and listen to Weed Wonks over at weedwonks.com with wonks spelled W-O-N-K-S and the Green Rush over at greenrushpodcast.net. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Monday, November 4th, 2019, and you are tuned in to episode 832 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Kyle Yeager over at Marijuana Moment starts off our news week with pickup of a storyline in Mexico that we've been watching involving the state's Senate and its work to pass legal adult use marijuana to meet a deadline set by the Mexican Supreme Court. The deadline, as Kyle is reporting, has now been missed and extended by six months after the Supreme Court ruled last week to give lawmakers more time, with the news breaking just on Friday. The new deadline is now April 30th, 2020, by which time Mexico is to have a plan for full-blown legalization. Kyle's piece has all the details. If you want them, swing over to Marijuana Moment for more. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com. CNN has a potentially large story out of California where police say they've busted an illicit marijuana farm with a plant count numbering north of 10 million. That's plants. 10 million plants. The busted farm was spread out over just 459 acres of land about 100 miles north of Los Angeles and was said to be an industrial hemp grow, though police say that was just a front. It's always useful to be skeptical of figures given by police. In this case, the Kern County Sheriff's Office said that 10 million plants would have a value on the illicit market of around $1 billion. There's still a lot of unknown details here. Most importantly, how much actual THC was found in the plants. As you should know by now, industrial hemp is defined as marijuana with less than 0.3% THC. This grabbed our second top spot today for the sheer scale of the bust, as well as the relatively small footprint of the farm. 459 acres is not that much land relative to big agriculture, but $1 billion is a lot of money. And even if that figure is inflated, which it likely is, it was still a lot of plants caught up in the bust. Give this one a read. To Massachusetts, where on Thursday, a group of registered medical marijuana patients submitted a new filing in a lawsuit against the state, arguing that the ban on cannabis vaporizer products imposed by Governor Charlie Baker is illegal, as actual authority over the Massachusetts medical marijuana market belongs to the state's Cannabis Control Commission and not the Department of Health, the actual agency that is carrying out Governor Baker's ban. This storyline has been fairly convoluted since it started, as a court decision found that Baker's ban did originally skip over some important regulatory steps, but left it in place while giving Baker time to catch up. If you're watching this, I'd swing over to Dan Adams' story in the Boston Globe for the full digest. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, as well as their flagship title, Marijuana Today, and the Green Rush and Weed Wonks shows. Did you know that we started up our flagship weekly podcast, Marijuana Today, just a few weeks after Washington State became the first in the nation to legalize adult use? We're now creeping towards our sixth year in the legal marijuana podcasting game with ever more listeners tuning in each month. Our flagship show, Marijuana Today, is now in the top 2% most downloaded podcasts in the entire world. That's all podcasts everywhere. We are the 2%. This show, Marijuana Today, draws in thousands of listeners each day, thousands of people who are most likely in the legal marijuana industry or actively working to be. 
We figure we have more than 30,000 listeners and all out there in Marijuana Nation, which is far and away the biggest in our industry and something we built entirely through word of mouth. Think about how big a space you would need to hold 30,000 people. You can reach all of those folks through sponsorship of our shows, which you can learn about by emailing me at shay at mjtodaymedia.com. We can work with all budgets from small startups to big corporations. If you're spending any marketing dollars in legal marijuana, you need to be spending some of that with us. It'll be the best marketing decision you'll ever make. One last time, just email me at shay at mjtodaymedia.com with shay spelled S-H-E-A. All right, time for the Blitz. Tom Angel, writing over at Forbes, is reporting that a bill to repeal the Higher Education Act of 1998's provision, stripping financial aid from college students convicted of certain drug-related crimes, was approved late last week by the House Education and Labor Committee. The bill will remove the question on the form students fill out when applying for financial aid, asking if they've been convicted of drug crimes, while also stripping away the associated penalty. This is a very long-running issue in the world of student drug reform and played a catalytic role in the growth of students for sensible drug policy, which Tom's story touches on. Tom is a former SSD peer, as am I, and most of the regulars on our podcast. This is a good one. Give it a read. The state of Michigan started accepting applications for adult use marijuana business licenses on Friday with a special early round opening up for existing medical marijuana provisioning centers as dispensaries are officially designated in the state. Illinois cannabis officials just gave the nod to two more marijuana cultivators to grow for the soon to launch adult use market set to open up on January 1st. GTI Rock Island and Wellness Group Pharma joined seven other already licensed adult use cultivators, all of which already grow for Illinois' medical dispensaries. On Friday, the Iowa Medical Cannabidiol Board voted to add PTSD to the state's list of medical marijuana qualifying conditions, while also approving a proposal changing up the way the state limits the sale of THC cannabis products. Iowa has one of the more restrictive medical marijuana programs in the U.S. and has banned the sale of any product with more than 3% THC. The new set of rules approved on Friday would instead allow medical patients to buy no more than 4.5 grams of THC over 90 days. The recommendation to add PTSD now goes before the Iowa Board of Medicine for final approval. An official with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention appeared on a C-SPAN show late last week and admitted that regulating and labeling marijuana vaporizer products would be safer for consumers. CDC Principal Deputy Director Ann Shuchat also spoke during her appearance of vaporizer cartridges and the ongoing vape health scare, noting that, quote, many have gotten those cartridges from informal sources, off the street or from friends or family or online, but not from dispensaries or brick or mortar stores, unquote. Kyle has a good story on this with embedded video. With his third story of the day, Kyle picks up on a great interview given by Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, in which he talked about, in part, his plan for reforming marijuana laws if elected president. This is absolutely worth taking the time to watch as Bernie lays out the three basic tenets of his plan, which would deschedule marijuana while providing for the automatic expungement of cannabis crimes and keeping out large corporations from the legal marijuana business game. Give it a watch. We end today in California, where the Times Standard looks at how recent mandatory power cuts imposed by the utility company PG&E has impacted the legal marijuana industry. PG&E has cut power to large parts of the Golden State for various amounts of time in recent weeks, as strong winds and generally bad weather has increased the chances that downed power lines would set off large forest fires. Access to electricity is vital for the direct operations of most legal cannabis operators, which were also impacted by lower sales as consumers tightened up their own budgets to also deal with power cuts. This is a good story to have a solid handle on if you do any kind of business in California. It doesn't look like this whole climate change thing is going anywhere anytime soon.
Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links for all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, MJ Today Media, and to our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Jay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.